the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, open our hearts and our minds to receive your light and life, so that we might share them with others. Amen. Please be seated. The house where I grew up had a huge side yard, wide open, solid grass. It was the perfect place for two-hand touch football, capture the flag, and whistle ball. On Sunday afternoons, while my parents took their Sabbath nap, the five of us Poindexter children invited our friends over to play in that side yard. Twelve to fifteen children of all ages, unsupervised and unfenced area, left to our own devices and imaginations. One of the games we sometimes play was pile-on. I don't remember the real object of the game or even if it was a game that was played anywhere else. But one of us would fall to the ground and all the other kids would pile on top until there was this huge mound of bodies lying on top of each other. Whoever was on the bottom had to try and muscle a way out. Obviously, if you were younger, smaller, or weaker, your chances of getting out were slim to none. And physical strength, size, and age were definite advantages to this game. The past four months have felt like the giant, real-life game of pylon. Four months of being mostly isolated at home, watching the deaths from COVID-19 rise to 130,000 in the U.S., being separated from our families and friends, and feeling community divisions intensify, all with no real end in sight, layer upon layer. The fatigue is real. The weariness is no joke and the weight is considerable. And we all have our place in the pile, each with loads of our own unique to us. Unemployment, lack of childcare, underlying health conditions, not to mention our own past emotional traumas, families of origin, some dysfunctional and some not as much, factor in to where we are right now. The weight on some of us is close to breaking us. If I ask you to rank your place in the pile on a scale of 1 to 10, what would that number be today? How do we find relief right now from our burdens? Who are we asking for help? Or are we even the type to ask for help if we need it? Jesus' invitation at the end of today's gospel is there. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. We hear this passage quite often in funeral services to celebrate someone who's been laid to rest, celebrating a life of hard work and carrying heavy loads. The words are comforting and offer hope to those of us who are left to endure our own hard work and heavy loads. Jesus adds to his invitation to put on his easy yoke and learn from him. He says that he is gentle and humble in heart and him will find rest for our souls. Typically, this stirs up those images of the pair of oxen being joined together with that big wooden yoke ready for work in the fields. That less experienced ox learning how to do the work from the more experienced ox. In ancient Jewish tradition, though, the yoke referred to teaching and instruction and wisdom. 
Throughout Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is the wisdom of God embodied. His invitation isn't just about letting go and letting God. His invitation is for us to draw closer to Him, join ourselves to Him, so that we might know His ways. Ways to interact with others, to participate in God's wisdom, to grow and bloom, to build the kingdom of God in the here and now. However, when we're like those fickle children in the marketplace in today's gospel, switching from funeral dirge to wedding march, it's difficult to know whether we want to grieve or to celebrate. Jesus chastises the crowd for being like this, changing the rules, the standards, to suit their own interests. We have our own disparities at play in real time today. Anti-abortion protesters carry signs that say, protect the vulnerable, the unborn. At the same time, open up America, protesters, carry signs that say, sacrifice the weak, the elderly. It suits us just fine that cities have ordinances that ban smoking in public spaces. Yet we see people unwilling to wear a mask to a grocery store. We humans can be pretty fickle. And oftentimes we follow up with, if you don't like it, you can leave. What is that? This tendency to dismiss someone else's experiences as invalid, unworthy, or to exclude someone simply because their views and life circumstances are different from ours. Paul speaks to this in his letter to the Romans, this internal wrestling that's going on. When we know the thing we ought to do, and we want to do the thing we ought to do, but somehow we just can't do it. He writes of not understanding his own actions. While he delights in God's laws and his innermost self, he still acts on the hateful thing. Paul calls it being captive to the law of sin. Still, Paul gives thanks to God that through Jesus we are rescued, released. Jesus. God's own wisdom among us sees us trying to make the world fit our wants and our needs, watches us compete with one another for whose way is the right way, recognizes that we're afraid to be seen as open and vulnerable because that might mean we're weak and needy. He knows that our human ways prevent us from entering more fully into relationship with God and with one another. So Jesus breaks it down for us into two simple laws to remember above all other standards. Love God with everything you've got, heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor like your own self. We must constantly ask ourselves, what does love look like in the situation where I find myself? How would love respond to this person in front of me? In humility, how can I see this person through the lens of Jesus' love? With gentleness, what can I do to promote love in this conflict? Practicing wisdom. How might I invite someone else to draw closer to God? Did I offer to help lighten someone's load today by listening, by lending a hand, or by shouldering part of their load? I pose these questions to each of us today 
with no intention of answering them. Each of us is invited to embody God's wisdom by following Jesus' ways of love. And by accepting the invitation, we acknowledge that we don't have all the answers. We understand that our experiences are not the only ones that matter. And when that happens, we are able to reach beyond ourselves to help someone else. What I remember most about being on the bottom during that pile-on game is how connected we all were, lying on top of each other. And when I could hardly breathe from being on the bottom and needed to get out, everyone else in the pile began reaching out, hands pulling one another off the pile, until a hand finally reached for me and I got out. I remember what a relief that was. I wonder if this is the state of peace that rest for our souls that Jesus invites us to share.